We have made it to the MOA BMW Rally. Yes. going <laughs> signal okay right signal mountain Sig signal mountain resort is what it says okay um, and then we're gonna continue down that road and go past the big lake <laughs> we need to go to the visitor center so we can figure out what's around here <laughs> we're gonna make it to the we're gonna go to the visitor center but go the back way okay yeah all right we're just exploring today's mm -hmm. just kind of a day of just wander around and see what we can get into all right we'll see you out there So we, behind us is the Cunningham Cabin outside of Jackson in Teton National Park. Mm -hmm. And it was built by Pierce Cunningham and his bride, Margaret, in either 1888, 1890, they settled here. They built this, eventually um, they raised like 100 cattle, eight horses on 200 acres, I think it was. Yeah, and but, but what, the, what the brochure talks about <laughs> is that how these ranches failed mm -hmm. in this area because they couldn't grow enough to keep the work animals healthy and cultivate enough land in the short uh, summers they had. Yes. So they really didn't, it really didn't work out well as a ranch. It was very hard times. In the summer, it would be great. In the winter, in the winter, it would be rough. in the winter, it would be really hard. Okay, and I have to say that stopping here was just a spur of the moment thing because we are actually camped right across the street from the Cunningham cabin. So we geared up, got completely geared up, got on the motorcycles for two seconds, and then took off all the coats and everything. <sighs> okay. camped right over here right across the street is the Cunningham cabin and so we came up here and we've turned off here at the Jackson Lake Junction we're right around here taking a rest stop we're gonna head to Signal Mountain so we're get, actually just gonna do this whole loop here today and who knows where we're gonna stop we're trying to figure that out but that's what we're doing today and here's what we know if you want to see animals you need to get a start an early start to the day we're talking like four or five o'clock in the morning that being said richard and i got a really late start today it's already 10 o'clock we're going to see a beautiful road for riding we're going to see the awesome tetons and we're going to see some pretty wildflowers well, i don't know if, they said they found a bear yesterday oh, true. didn't they and they were feeding it popcorn which is the wrong thing to do well i don't yeah that's what we heard yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't feed the bears. Don't feed the bears. No matter how cute they are. Okay, I've been trying, I've been trying to get a picture without cars. <laughs> I've been trying to get a picture of your wheel without cars. I will get it. I will get this shot. We'll get the, this shot of the bikes without cars. <laughs> if I have to stay here all day. <laughs> nope, here comes the truck. All right. I tried. Cut that last part out. I really tried. <laughs> yeah, so, we'll, so we'll cut that last part out. <laughs> what part's that? 
where you said, I'm gonna stay here until I die. <laughs> One shot later. One nah. shot later, nah. Wait, there wait, you go, wait, wait, you got it. Wait. Nope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I literally cannot get this shot. Yes. How long it take took to get that shot? Here they come. All right, off we go. Oh yeah, here we go. Big old elk. Huge elk. That's cool. Look at the antlers on him. I know. Wow. That is a big old boy right there. So Richard and I were just talking in that we did we did this route the right way actually. We took yes. it counterclockwise in the morning and so the sun we're, we're running into you see these mountain ranges every time you go around a corner and the sun is reflecting off of them versus if we were going the other way the sun would be in our eyes. Um, so definitely we recommend taking this route counterclockwise going counterclockwise out and that's where you see all the everything in the sun's at your shoulder it's not in your face mm -hmm. it's the perfect way to ride this one ride this around oh it's beautiful and the mountains yes. are always right in front of you i mean it feels like you're just gonna scale them or go over yeah. them i mean it's just stunning look at that yeah oh my gosh look at that i mean i know <laughs> i know <sighs> correct this is this, where the infamous the... jenny lake hike is if there are other national parks have had people out there that are like, no, nope, can't park here. There's no more parking. Mm, it's full. Yeah. So we're going to bop down here real quick and take a look at Jenny Lake. We braved all that traffic. We're going to see something. Yeah, something. <laughs> uh, hopefully. Oh, hey, dinner. I saw them. I wonder what those are. Trout. It's a big trout right there. They're awesome. So Richard found a dirt road in Teton National Park. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> As for a shady spot, that I don't know about. So we wandered down this road, and it really didn't go anywhere. To, okay. Well, it went to a boat launch, and then another part of it went to a hiking trail. So we just stopped, parked the bikes in the shade, had a quick bite for lunch. Now we're heading back out. We're at <laughs> Signal Mountain. Oh, okay. <laughs> Signal Mountain Lodge. <laughs> All right, today we're gonna ride over to Coulter Bay and take a quick hike on the- a quick hike? On the Hermitage Trail. A quick hike? Seven, eight, nine miles? <laughs> Richard, <laughs> Richard's not supposed to know how far it is. <laughs> I already know. <laughs> All right, we're just, uh, yeah, we need to get going before it gets too hot. Yep. See you out on the road or on the trail. Or somewhere. The Teton National Park and we slid in behind a group of combat vets. Thank you for your service, Abs gentlemen. Absolutely. We wanted to just give a shout out to everybody that might be watching this. If you've served in the military or are serving in the military, we thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts and our thoughts and prayers go out to you. Yep, we wouldn't be able to do this if they weren't out doing that. I know. I know, it's awesome. Don't say ew, maybe we won't air this <laughs> or we'll put it as a blooper, but here's what we did. I made lunch and I put it in a Walmart bag. We also had two trash bags in Walmart bags. And Richard grabbed them all up out of the back of his motorcycle and threw them in the bear box and our lunch is now sitting in the bear box. And we're gonna try to retrieve it because you can't pick this up it's too heavy 
The only way in is through here. And you, our lunch is down there. Our lunch is right oh. here. Oh. How about if we get two sticks? Because if you if you do don't do this right, Richie, you're not. We're gonna dump everything out. Oh, we lost the Sawyer. The bag. I got it. I got it, but the lid's got to come down. This thing's got to come down. Okay. That was protected. We can eat that. We haven't even got out of the parking lot yet and we're lost. <laughs> What, what great hikers are we? It's amazing. Right. That was nice. Yeah. But you're also four and a half miles in. <laughs> right? Already getting confetti down my Pacer app. <laughs> Saying, what a great job today. <laughs> Richard's uh, doing awesome. Uh, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I got him. I got him four and a half miles in, and you know he's got to get out. <laughs> got to get out his, now. His motorcycle's out there somewhere, so he's not going to leave Miss Alice. And no. Live off the land out here in Teton National Park. <laughs>
you can, I, I guess I hadn't realized how close the Tetons National Park was to Yellowstone National Park. It's like 28 miles. Yeah, it's, and, and in between that is a wilderness area mm -hmm. that, that Cunningham gave it to the Rockefeller, sold it to John D. Rockefeller, and then Rockefeller donated it to the state and the government for a wilderness and preserve. Two babies. Yeah. Bunch, of geese, bunch of geese over here. Is there? Yeah. Nobody cares about geese. <laughs> like, I know. Elk, buffalo. <laughs> oh my yeah, god. And the poor, and the poor park ranger is just wearing his arm out, going, <laughs> "Come on, come on, come on!" Yeah, don't stop, don't stop, keep moving, keep moving. Yeah, look at this. Because <laughs> it goes way back there. I mean, it's amazing how. <laughs> far this is gone. That's because, okay, so we're getting ready to leave the park. Yeah. But you would not believe <laughs> this huge line. You don't go oh, that way. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this guy's like, what? <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> what did he say? Uh, I thought he said 14 mile line. They aren't going to aren't going to understand until they get in there. That's what they were saying. They were saying go to the bar and drink beer. <laughs> be our final stop. We're about 80 miles outside of um, the rally, 80 miles outside of Great Falls, and uh, we're heading into rain, so we're going to stop and make sure everything's secure, make sure the stuff we don't want to get wet isn't going to get wet. Yeah, as you can see, it's pretty. We're heading up into, into that stuff. Let's see how wet we get. That's like a GS that shrunk. Seriously, look how small it is. How does that work? How do they do that? Yeah. This is what you do here, right? We have made it. And she's she's made it. She's made it, and she's showered, so she's happy now. Um, we're gonna make a little bit of dinner, and then we are going to wander around and see if we can. Meet. Kind of trouble we can get into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Yes. We have made it to the MOA BMW Rally. Yes. So yes. we really don't know what to expect. Nope. Um, we've never been to one of the big ones, so we're going to kind of go and explore and let you know what it's all about because I'm sorry we can't really say what it's all about. Here's the little that we have learned is they have a band every night. Yeah. Everybody... And it's way away from us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, when we pulled in, I said, okay, well, where is everybody camping? And she pointed to the right and I said, well, can I camp over there to the left? <laughs> and she's like, yes. sure. <laughs> so we are, we're over here probably the furthest away from the stage, which is actually perfect. Yes. Yeah. Um, the other things that it does appear is they have lots of vendors, food trucks, um, Let's go look around first and see what we got. Yeah. And then we'll just let, we'll keep you guys in the loop yep. of what's going on. We'll go explore. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, one other thing. Oh, one more thing. Um, we are going to stop by the Dunlop uh, has a tent here. My front tire, which, okay, I'm a little disappointed. I have 8,500 miles on my bike and my front tire is shot. The back tire is in good shape, but the front one is trashed. I don't know what the deal is. And, I, and I only have 8,500 miles on the motorcycle. So and I, you're not loaded. You're not loaded like Ruby is or like Miss Alice is. No, I must be leaning too much in the front. Is that it? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's this big bulky open body you have. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go <laughs> check out the Dunlop tent. All right. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll show you around here in a little bit. Okay. So here's what we found out is we went through the vendor exhibit. So how much does this weigh dry? It weighs right now, the prototype comes in at about 110 pounds, uh, but we're probably gonna produce, it when we go to production, hopefully about 90 pounds. So the company is called Pask, and this is the Goose. So we've got other trailers we're planning, and we wanna name them all after migratory birds. And we talked to uh, Dunlap tires. We have an appointment scheduled between 9 and 9.30 tomorrow yep. to get some tires on. Uh, so with the Trailmax mission, we consider this a 50-50. We wanted a tire that would perform just as well off-road as it would on-road. Uh, so we, we built a tire that we wanted to be stable at very high speeds on, on, on pavement. Mm -hmm. uh, also handle the twisties, but then be able to just turn right off onto a fire road and take off. I also have classes over here there you have to pay for them but they have training classes you ride through a bunch of cones and do figure eights okay, wait and... stop squirrel or in this case sidecar <laughs> see that no see right there oh okay <laughs> okay sidecar <laughs> <laughs> Richard's just wandering around. He's in motorcycle heaven, so just ignore him. <laughs> anyway. There's some pretty nice bikes here. Yes. A lot of BMWs. Yes, and we want to give a shout out. A lot of BMWs. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just get just that? that? Oh my gosh. Uh. <laughs> All right. Okay. I wanted to give a... How do I say this? A shout, shout out. out to everybody that we have met. Yes. One thing cool about coming to a rally like this and tent camping, which might be kind of hard for a lot of people prefer to stay in a hotel, but you really get to meet a lot of people. And even if I guess you stay in a hotel, you can walk around and meet tons of people. But we've just met the most awesome, awesome. salt of the earth, amazing people at this rally. That I am encouraged from listening to their stories and am excited to watch their adventures as they go out and do their own ride. What year do you think that is? You guys are my favorite. I saw you. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot guarantee, Kim. It's so I don't care. <laughs> but no, I have I met my new best friend. Yes. Her name is Kim. And I just want to bottle her up and take her with us. She is. Um, I'm out. She is. <laughs> uh, I, I probably shouldn't tell her age, but she is um, an amazing woman. She's 50. Yeah. She is just learning to ride a motorcycle. And I am so impressed with her. Yeah, but wait, and, you wait know. she has she has a Harley. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I am so impressed. Rich, yep. She didn't get to be. Not that she's old or anything, but I just love meeting women that you know are on the other side of the hill like me, and are still wanting to go out and explore and try new things. And yes. that's Kim. So yes, that's me. 
There I'm you go. so happy. Thank you. Oh my God. It was so A somewhat appointment around 9, 9.30 to get my bike over into Dunlop. Hopefully they can get us in. We did choose the 50-50 tire after talking to them. Um, it was a good sales pitch. We'll see yeah. how they do. <laughs> yes, here's the deal. We came over to sign up for tires yesterday morning. because so we got in late Thursday. We came over Friday and he said just drop it off between 9 9 30 and he'll try to fit it in so he came over and that was the end of it we didn't get on the list shame on us and we came over today and now he has counted his tires and he doesn't have enough in inventory for a dunlap tire so the tire saga continues we stopped in i think it's about two o'clock they said Let's maybe <laughs> all right fingers crossed I'll let you know it's still up in the air it's still up yeah we're supposed to check back tomorrow, eight o'clock, or maybe they'll text us. We'll see. Um, yeah. They were gonna close up shop today at six. The the only company here changing tires, and so they it's a madhouse over there because everybody's getting their tires changed. So we're waiting. If one guy doesn't show up, I can get tires. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. One guy needs to go home. <laughs> maybe he doesn't need them that bad. We'll see. This is the last tire entry I'm going to put in. Here's our advice to you. If you're coming to a rally and you find some tires or you think you're gonna have your tires changed, because they do usually offer a pretty good price. Really good price. Uh, schedule an appointment right away because it fills up fast. But we'll, we'll, we'll we did check get... back this afternoon. We might get them this afternoon, yeah. but it, it doesn't look promising. No, right it doesn't now. look promising. Tell me your story again. <laughs> you hit a deer. <laughs> you hit a deer for one. And yeah. You stayed upright. Stayed upright. So it all started out with me coming from Dallas to the, the rally up here at, uh, in Montana. I was going from Red Lodge coming to here and I got 180 miles from the rally and uh, a deer just suddenly appeared in front of me and I hit him. I was doing about, I was doing 75. So uh, I hit him. I just grabbed on, leaned forward, and uh, didn't go down. Coasted to this after, after, after the deer fell off of me, I guess. <laughs> Coasted yeah. to the side of the road. Of course, I had stuff all over me and all over the bike and uh, in the middle of nowhere in Montana. I used the anonymous book with BMW, found a guy in Bozeman. Uh, he came up, picked me up, took me to his house, and uh, by six o'clock that afternoon, I was on a plane back to Dallas. Uh, I woke up that next day and 4.30 that afternoon, I hooked up the car, the trailer to the car yeah. to head back up. I drove 27 miles, I mean, I'm sorry, 27 hour. hours, all the way back to that guy's house, nonstop, uh, loaded the bike onto the trailer and decided to go ahead and still come to the rally. So, and here I am. And here you are. So, here he is. I mean, you want to talk about determination to yeah. get up to Montana so, uh, to the rally. My hat's off cool. to him. I had all red, all new plan here. All right, I thought I would do a couple quick takeaways of what we garnered from our first rally. And I'm sure Richard's gonna have a couple to offer too, but he's being a sweetheart and he's over there seeing if he can finagle a pair of, or a set of tires for me, so. Talk to the Dunlap guys. Guess what? what? Well, yeah. what did I? First of all, what did I do? I walked back. I, from was, just, the, I was just going to say, yeah, <laughs> you're walking. There's they, no motorcycle, so this is. They good told news. me no, and I left it over there. <laughs> <laughs> Great. No, we got the last set of tires for the Dunlop. Wow. Well, it'll probably be the last set of those style of tires. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah. So it's supposed to be really good tires. It's supposed to be quiet. A lot of people we talk to that have them have said they're quiet on the road, they're good in the handles. Uh, one guy said they didn't really work well with the, the tar snakes, but then again, no tire works well yeah. with tar snakes. We'll let you know. This is our, was our first rally, and so here's a couple things that we learned. Number one, I think if we did another rally, we would get here on time. And what I mean by that is this rally started Thursday morning. 
Um, we kind of missed out on a lot of things. We missed out on getting settled in and scoping it out and figuring it all out the first day. And so it just kind of felt like the whole time we were here, we we're kind of playing catch up. All right, the second takeaway that I have, if you think you want to buy something and have it installed on your motorcycle, and we're talking about maybe tires or lights or whatever vendor is here, I highly suggest that you get over to the vendor that you want to um, have your accessories installed and get an appointment. All right, my last suggestion is, and this really depends on your own personal preference. When you get here and you pull in and maybe you've pre-registered or you need to register, check with the volunteers and ask them, if you're camping, ask them, hey, what's the best place to camp? These rallies can last anywhere from three to, you know, seven days. And you wanna make sure that you are in a place that's comfortable to you based on what you like. Those are my three suggestions. Overall, I, we had a fantastic time. about this for a crowd, huh? <laughs> Walking through people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My little GS was having some anxiety there. Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of a giant, no. but he's all no. good. No. <laughs> all right, Max made it all this the way. This is the little, the youngest, by the way. Yes. yes. Max made it all the way from Tennessee. We've been waiting and hoping for this day to happen. Oh, he's, he's 21 years old, and he's going to mm. experience Sturgis. I'm excited. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's why I pulled those plugs yeah. out, and it, and it just gushed. Yeah. I mean, it shot probably 15 feet around. Off. Everyone was like, oh, my God. I was like, yeah. It's a hard day today. But we got good news. Miss Alice is out of the shop.